the way I heard the story was uh, John Landis had a bungalow on the Universal lot for a long period of time. And he hadn't made a hit movie, I think, at that point since uh, Blues Brothers, I think, was the last big hit he had. And he'd been on the lot for several years, and Sid Sheinberg was, you know, he wants to make sure everybody's paying. If he's giving you a bungalow, you're paying rent on that lot somehow, you know. So um, he went to uh, Sid Sheinberg. This was Shid Sid Sheinberg's initial idea. We have all these television shows from the 1950s. Most of them um, uh, s serialized, you know, kind of anthology shows under the banner of things like General Electric Playhouse, uh, Dumont Theater, you know, uh, so it, it was really a, a client-supplied show. And, but it had huge stars in a lot of them. Now, uh, I have to say the huge stars that were in them were usually at the latter part of their careers, but still people like Betty Davis, Joan Crawford, you know, huge stars. Um, and uh, so John, uh, so uh, Sid Sheinberg took these to John and he said, we had all this footage, figure out something to do with it. So figure out a way we can make money off of this stuff. So uh, John had gone through a bunch of ideas uh, before I'd met him, he had thought about doing uh, something like uh, uh, the Mystery Science uh, 3000 show, where basically it would be a cross between that and Animal House. It would take place in a fraternity house where fraternity members are watching these old television shows in the basement and they're goofing on them. And, you know, you have the silhouettes in the foreground. That idea really couldn't find any traction. And then there was another idea to do it as a game show. Uh, and he looked at that for a while. And Marta and David brought in the idea of doing it as the uh, clips that we pull from these 1950 television shows are going to represent the internalized thoughts of our central character in this show. Uh, and the background being that uh, the character Martin Tupper was uh, raised in front of a TV set, sound familiar, uh, in the 1950s. And so this whole, uh, all these television shows just became part of his psyche of, you know, how he thought about the world. Um, so, uh, so that was the beginnings of Dream On. And when we shot the pilot, uh, again, we were making this for HBO. Uh, I don't want to say the amount of money that we were making them for because it's, it's, it's so low, it's just like the show doesn't look like that. And I want you to think, well, come on, now, I, now, I, now that I look at it, it looks a little cheaper than I thought it did. No, um, uh, that was a show where, you know, I kind of, as an executive producer, got to pull together all the tricks that I had learned from doing all these shows on the cheap for over the years. And... Uh, uh, was able to pull off a first season of uh, Dream On that was phenomenal, shot on 35 millimeter film, uh, shot with location in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was a fun puzzle um, that, you know, we just had an amazing time, the three of us. Um, uh, John, John directed the pilot and he would direct episodes from time to time, but he was making feature films and Marta and David and I were making Dream On and mm -hmm. having a great time.